Flying Brian here at Gettysburg National Military Park. The area I am in today is the center of the Union Army's line as it was positioned on Friday, the 3rd of July, 1863. The artillery pieces are where Cushing's battery was that morning, facing west toward the Confederate line, about one mile distant. Two days ago, most of the fighting was off to the right. Yesterday, the fighting was mainly to the left. Today, the Confederates will emerge from the tree line in the distance, march across almost a mile of open field, and concentrate their forces against this very area of the Union defenses. The remnants of the stone wall here demarks the actual Union line that day. Infantry units would have been deployed along the wall. Side by side, they knelt and crouched behind the stones, using them as life-saving cover, and they waited for what they knew would eventually come, a very determined Army of Northern Virginia, which hoped to sweep the Union soldiers from the field. The line stretched south toward the Pennsylvania Monument and beyond to Little Round Top in the distance. That distant tree line beyond the cars traveling down the Emmitsburg Road is the Confederate line. Directly in front of our position here on the Union side of the line, about three quarters of a mile distant, is the Virginia State Monument and it is close to the center of what is commonly known as Pickett's Charge. The action started at 1 p.m. that afternoon when hundreds of Confederate cannons opened fire from the tree line across the field, directing their shells at where I am standing. At 3 p.m., the cannonade ceased, and over 12,000 Confederate soldiers emerged from the trees, forming a one-mile line that began moving east towards this spot in the Union defenses. At first, the Union soldiers deployed along this position simply watched as fellow Union Army units to the north and to the south rained down artillery and musket fire onto the advancing Confederates, tearing hole after hole in their line. But they kept coming. As they approached, Cushing's battery let fly an absolutely blistering barrage of canister fire into the faces of the oncoming Confederates. Now, for the protection of the stone wall, the Union riflemen opened up on those that remained. Despite withering fire and suffering unimaginably as they crossed the open field, the Confederates still kept coming. By the time they got to the stone wall, their numbers had been cut in half. Every other man was now gone. Led by General Armistead, a few Confederates breached the wall and attempted to take the Union position. But victory was short-lived. General Armistead was badly wounded. The Union line was reinforced, and the Confederates were pushed back in a melee of musket fire, bayonets, and hand-to-hand -hand fighting. It would have been a horrific scene of dead and dying men and animals, thick smoke, fire, and destruction everywhere. General Armistead lay dying among the chaos and destruction, this monument marking the spot where he fell. Out in that direction there, that is west, and that's where the Confederate line was. That's where they charged behind me, almost behind these trees is the high water mark of the Confederacy. They uh, succeeded in breaching the Union line for only a few minutes, and then they were repulsed. And from that point on, the Confederates retreat throughout the, pretty much the rest of the war. This is the high water mark of the Rebellion Monument because from this time on, the Confederacy never again advanced this far north. And two years later, it faded into history with the surrender at Appomattox. Here's the scene from the Confederate point of view. Off in that direction, that again is the high water mark. That's where Ar uh, Armistead was successful in breaching the Union line only for a few minutes before they were repulsed. But 
this is what they were looking at, sort of an uphill battle at this point. They, and they had just come from way over that way. It's almost a mile away after marching across this open field. Incredible. I am now on the opposite side of the battlefield, in the Confederate lines. This marker is where units of North Carolinians were positioned on that fateful day, including the Charlotte Artillery that was part of Pender's Division, which took part in the bombardment of the Union line that started at 1 p.m. ahead of Pickett's Charge. This amazing sculpture is the North Carolina Monument. It depicts a wounded soldier pointing the way forward to the enemy. Two comrades charge ahead, followed by the color bearer. This marker and the marker in the distance show where the North Carolina units were positioned in the line as they joined in Pickett's charge and began their march across the field. This is what the scene looked like. Little and Big Round Tops off in the distance to the right, and straight ahead, the Union Line. Their destination was just to the left of the United States Regulars Monument, the tall needle-like monument, three quarters of a mile distant. Looking left was the town of Gettysburg. One can only imagine what was going through the minds of these soldiers as the Confederate cannonade finally ceased at 3 p.m. that Friday afternoon and the order was given to move out and start across this open, exposed field on that hot, humid afternoon. Being near the left of the Confederate line, if you had looked right, you would have seen rank upon rank of Confederate soldiers emerge from the tree line. It must have been reassuring to see so many of your comrades moving and joining with you against the enemy in the distance. North Carolinians emerged from the Confederate line here behind me along this tree line. They began their portion of Pickett's Charge across the open fields to the Union line in the distance. However, it was not long before Union artillery began tearing holes in their lines. The closer they got, the more furious the shooting became. As soldiers fell, holes opened in their line. Unbelievably, they filled rank and kept moving forward. Cannon shot, shell, and canister tore randomly into the line of soldiers. It must have been a grim sight to have a soldier marching next to you one second and gone the next. But those that remained kept going. Little did these people know their efforts would not carry the day. In fact, after losing one half of their ranks, the Union would force them from the field and send General Lee and the Army of Northern Virginia retreating south. But one absolutely has to recognize and admire the dedication, the loyalty these soldiers demonstrated that terrible day. Remember, life is a journey. Enjoy the ride, and thank you for watching.